This is the pen that President Biden used to sign Juneteenth into law. Juneteenth is not a Texas thing. It's not a black thing. Only for descendants of American slaves. A hey, all gravity. Any day above ground, live it. So you already know what to do. Share, like, and subscribe. That's right. Share, like, and subscribe because I'm not like other YouTubers. I'm different. Man, I know FBA and ADOS and the Freedmen are going to get mad at me for this video, but hopefully y'all won't get mad at me after you hear the video. So you saw what I put in the beginning, folks. Nice little montage. Try to keep it under 30 seconds. All the stuff that's been happening since Juneteenth got signed into law. And folks, I got to blame Opal Lee for this. Of course you know I'm going to blame Opal Lee for this. You saw the title. Yes, I'm blaming her for this. Because for her and what she was doing for the past 14 years, starting with Obama and then with Biden, she sat up there and was advocating for the holiday, which is fine. Advocating for its awareness, that's fine. But for you to go after he signs it, get the pen and then go sit down somewhere in the White House and give that speech where you said at the end, it's not a black thing, it's not a Texas thing. It, this is a freedom for everyone. No, ma'am, it is not. This is a holiday for foundational black Americans and the ADOS. Now I'm not an FBA, but I respect. I'm not like these Africans and Caribbean coons out here trying to grift some money off of Juneteenth by putting up the red, black, and green flag, which is Pan-Africanism, by the way. That's not the Juneteenth flag. The Juneteenth flag is what you see on the screen. But by you doing that and the speech and running around out here, you effectively made Walmart put out ice cream that nobody asked for and we had to go outside and say this is uh not cool they had to pull it and subsequently thanks to Tory and Rain Reloaded got a black woman who is FBA to sell out of her ice cream black owned so you, you did some you you inadvertently had a little bit to do with a positive thing okay like I said, you have the African and Caribbean coons trying to grift money off of Juneteenth, acting like it's their holiday, like it's an extension of the African American Day Parade or the West Indian Day Parade. No. They need to go sit down. We got, we got the federal government giving their workers a day off on Monday. So, so if y'all didn't give out y'all's Father's Day gifts, and you didn't send them out by yesterday, your daddy ain't gonna like you. And also, we have to we have to talk about it. The fact that we have a whole bunch of white folk running around here acting like they've been advocating for Juneteenth and ready to do Juneteenth celebration. And not now one of them could even probably tell you where Juneteenth actually started in what town. They couldn't even tell you. So yes, Miss Opalee, I blame you for this. Out of respect, I got to blame you for this. Because this is not the wave, man. This is not what we do. We're black folks. It's hard enough to get the government to actually listen to us. But when we're given the mic and we're given the opportunity, we have to maximize it. You didn't maximize it, man. You looked out for yourself. And I'm going to say it. You were thoroughly vetted since Obama. They knew you were not a threat. That was when you sat down and said that thing that Jason Black meticulously and hilariously destroyed you for last year. And I'm going to put a link to that show in the description box. I go to that show back every now and again. But when you said that, ma'am, you actually, according to B1, I don't know, this, this is for me, you became an enemy. Because that was nothing but a symbolic victory. Pyrrhic victory. You won for losing, man. You had an opportunity there to make legislation. You had an opportunity to advocate for the young. You had an opportunity to advocate for your 
your great grandkids and your grandkids. You didn't do that. You only wanted the white ice and approval of the biggest white man in the country. That's not what black people need right now. You could have advocated for Pine Bluff, Arkansas, which is actually a black Wall Street. There were things you could have said there. Hell, you're in Texas, man. Black folk in Texas need as much of a voice as anybody out here. Not That's not to say there's no FBAs and ADOS and B1s and Friedman down there that are putting in that work. Because there are. Shout out to Divine Stargate. Shout out to Troll Texas. But you know better, man. You know better. Texas is not is not conducive for a lot of black people. You know that. Juneteenth is a prime example. You guys were the last to be freed. You got the white supremacists down there. You got La Raza down there. The black folk in Texas are being vice gripped. And you had one opportunity to bring light and attention to that. And all you wanted was a pen and, and the white man to shake your hand. We can't do this, man. So for everything that's happened over the last year, I got to blame you for this. I have to. But you know, maybe, you know, every 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 person can change. There's always changing people. So, you know, maybe you've reflected and maybe you'll give a nice speech tomorrow if you do talk. Please advocate for black folks. That's all I'm gonna say. But before I get up out of here, you know, shout out to all the fathers out there um when you see this video i will currently be doing a twitter space with some brothers and we're gonna be chopping it up about black fatherhood on father's day so check this out i'll put the link in the description box as well but let me get up out of here you already know what to do share like and subscribe that's right share like and subscribe because i'm not like other youtubers i'm different take care stay safe i'm out